Hi, I'm James, and in this video I'm taking a look at the August DVB-T210 USB Freeview HD TV receiver. Uh, this is a DVB-T2 compliant uh, receiver, and I'm actually buying this out of personal interest as I have a small media centre which I wanted to add TV tuning support to. Um, didn't have room for a PCI Express card or PCI card inside of it, so USB tuner is the way to go. Um, I picked this up, I believe it was for about £25. I'll put a link in the description below to uh, Amazon. Um, but basically we have the tuner itself. It's basically just a small USB stick. Uh, you can see August branded on here. We have our aerial input on the end. And then beneath the cap, USB 2 on the other end, pretty standard really. Uh, no need for something like this to be USB 3, data rates on DVB T2 transmissions aren't anywhere near high enough to require that. So we have the stick itself, we have a little USB extension lead. Um, I won't need that for how I'm using this, it will just go straight in the back of the machine, but they're always handy to have. We have a small little aerial here. Um, I'll be plugging this into the aerial on the roof of our house which isn't the best um, but I don't have much use using these things but you never know it might be useful. Um, we have a small remote control here for it. Driver CD and user manual. So I'm going to be setting this up with Kodi and a TV backend for that. So I'm going to switch over to the media center and we'll take a look at that now. Now moving over to my media center box and I'm going to insert the uh, August DVB T210 stick. Windows should now start detecting this. Now I've already gone it's, as it's coming up as an unknown device. So I have already gone to the augustint.com website and we are in their uh, software download section, software downloads. We are going to scroll down to the August DVB T210. We can download ArcSoft Total Media from here as well, um, but I'm not going to be using that on this system, but it can be useful to test with. So we are just going to download the driver. And we're just going to copy that to the desktop. Terrible practice, I know, but we'll do that for the moment. And run the setup for that. Okay, let's go into the x64 directory and run the setup for that directly then, as the uh, standard one doesn't seem to be doing much. And we can see that's brought in our device. See, it's uh, while it's branded August, made by another company. Fairly uh, unexpected there. So that gets our drivers installed for the device. And now we've already gone to the Kodi wiki, and I'm going to use the Media Portal TV server. There's actually a very good guide on here for how to get this set up. Um, but we're just going to run through the basics of it quickly. So what we need to do is we need to first of all download Media Portal and then download the TV Server XBMC plugin for Media Portal. So we are going to go here, we're going to download Media Portal 1. Get that downloading. And then we'll also at the same time just pull down the latest version of the plugin. Let's pull down the zip copy rather than the. So I've just installed 7zip as I needed that for the RAR file on this machine. I try not to keep too much running on my media center uh, just because there's no point having more than I need installed. And we're going to run the media portal setup. Now 
we want to tell it yes we are using media portal to watch TV I'm going to say perform an advanced installation and I'm going to say dedicated TV server because I'm not going to be using media portal to playback we're going to go with MySQL 5 and just use the default options here for this this will now go through and download everything it needs so I'll probably skip through this a bit so now with the media portal setup uh, installation sorry complete we'll close down this and we want to just open up so this is the plugin we need to allow media portal to talk to uh, Kodi. So we need to copy this file to our install directory for media portal and we want to put it in plugins and we will need admin rights for that apparently. So next we need to copy across the plugin for media portal to allow Kodi to communicate with it so we're just going to extract this to the desktop and then from the desktop cut it and navigate to the media portal folder 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 and paste into there. I didn't extract directly because we need admin rights and 7-zip throws a bit of a hissy if we do that directly and now we can just clean up we don't need these on the desktop and now I'm just gonna have to switch to camera again because I need to move the computer over to where I have an aerial feed so what we want to do now that we're plugged into the TV and the aerial is bring up media portal and we need to say TV servers then we want to go in here we can see it has the DVB-T digital TV tuner we have selected the country as UK and we're going to select our local antenna or frequencies uh, oh, sorry transmitter um, which is Mendip and we're going to say scan for channels and this will now go through and it will search the sort of known frequencies used for this transmitter and we can see here it's already picking up sort of TV and radio stations what you can do if you don't know the region that you're in there is a all uh, frequencies option or all regions at the top which searches through all the regions for your country um, that are commonly used. This will take a very long time though so we've narrowed it down to just the region that we're in for this scan. Sometimes as well if you find that you've lost channels which you previously had it can be worth doing a rescan just because things move to different frequencies and so on and so forth. So with that done we can now see it's picked up various channels that are coming through on that transmitter. So so whilst in here we also want to just check plugins and we want to turn on TV server Kodi and XML TV and having done that we need to say manual control stop service start service and this will bring up the TV service and should oops, and should bring it up now running the plugin for Kodi. So now on here having done the setup for TV server we have a clean install of Kodi uh, this is the latest version 16.0 and we're going to go to system settings and first of all we're going to go to add-ons, my add-ons, PVR clients, media portal PVR client and we are going to enable that and because we're running this with the server on this machine default settings here are all fine um, free to wear only just because I don't have any uh, sort of scrambled channels I want to be able to access and default on there 
So with that done, well, there's just one last step, which is back to the settings here. We need to go into TV and enable TV. Now with that, we now have the TV option here. And if we go into channels, select BBC One and it will start up and start streaming that. And we can go through the various channels on here, switch between them. And so now we have TV running through our Kodi setup on our media center. I hope you found this video useful. I'm just gonna try one of the HD channels as well, um, as these should have picked up properly. So if we go to BBC One HD, now I don't think my aerial is the best in this area. So we do see, there was a tiny bit of break up there. Actually, it's, this appears to be doing better than the built-in tuner in the TV. Um, so not a bad performance. I normally get a bit of break up on HD TV channels uh, through this aerial, but actually the TV tuner here does fairly well. So 25 pounds to add TV to my media center. Really pleased with the August DVB T210. Um, you know, nice, simple to set up and seems to work pretty well. I hope you found this video useful and um, be sure to check out my channel for more guides and in subscribe if you want to see more in the future. Thanks for watching.